week. Today's show is going to be so much fun as I have the honor of having an amazing young lady on with me today. She's a bright light. She's thriving and she has an incredible success story about her life after a concussion. And I think this topic is so important that we really need to have more conversation about this, um, educate ourselves and share our stories, because every single day people are struggling with this invisible brain injury. And it has an, a, a tremendous impact on how we perform our emotions, our mood, our thoughts, our processing abilities. And so many people are struggling silently. So I'm excited to bring her on today so she can share her story, her hope, and her help that she's received along her journey. Um, did you know, before we get into that, I want to give you guys a little information. Did you know head injuries come from everywhere, whether that's work, an injury or an accident, being in a car accident, domestic violence, the military, or sports or recreational activities? It is estimated that as many as 3.8 million concussions occur in sports and recreational activities per year, and as many as 50% of those go unreported. And research shows that if you've had a concussion, especially if it's related to sports, then your chances of having a repeat injury increase drastically. A concussion is also known as a mild traumatic brain injury. It's caused by a bump or a blow or jolt to the head or the body that causes the brain to move rapidly in the skull and it changes how the brain normally functions. Signs and symptoms of an injury can look like headache, nausea, confusion, fatigue, memory problems, sleep disturbances, mood changes, meaning your personality may appear to change a little bit, sensitivities to sound, light, trouble reading or even processing information. So today, I'm super excited to have this incredible young lady who, in my definition, she has a mental edge, and she's the definition of mental fitness. She's on the show with me today, and she wants to share her story of hope, healing, and help. Brooke Freeman is a 22-year-old recent college graduate from Catawba College University with a BS in biology and a minor in chemistry. During her time in undergrad, she was a student athlete and played four years on the women's soccer team. She is currently a graduate student at the Medical University of South Carolina in the Physician's Assistant Program. Welcome to the show, Brooke. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so glad to have you, and I'm so excited about just your journey and just getting to know you over the last year. It's been such an incredible time. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you're doing right now, and, and a little bit about your journey. Yes, so about two months ago, I just graduated from Catawba College, um, and then about less than a week from graduating, I started at PA school down here in Charleston, South Carolina at MUSC, and I'm about halfway done with my first semester, so that's been really exciting, um, a big life change for me, but I'm loving it, I'm having a great time. <laughs> having some fun, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal. And, and I know before before you got off to this next phase of your life, you were recently at Catawba College playing soccer. Tell us a little bit about your story as it relates to, um, we're talking today about concussions, head injury. Tell us about your experience with that. Right. So um, my first diagnosed concussion was my freshman year and it was minor. I was out for maybe two or three weeks, um, just had the standard symptoms, headache, um, light noise sensitivity, wasn't anything, as I thought, very serious at the time. And then um, almost exactly a year later, in March of my sophomore year, I had another concussion, and that just absolutely changed my life. Um, I had just, you know, all the symptoms across the book, like you were saying, um, noise, light sensitivity. I was sick um, the night after it happened. It did happen um, in soccer during practice. Um, I was throwing up, I was super nauseous, um, it affected my sleep, my emotions. I just felt really not myself, just really out of control during that time. Um, I was out of soccer for, I think it took five months for me to be cleared. But even after that point, I was having just extreme post-concussion post -concussion symptoms. Um, I had really a lot of focus attention issues, a lot of sleep issues. I was sleeping so much, but I felt like every time I woke up, I wasn't well rested at all. I was really drained. I feel like I had 
not much control over my emotions. Um, struggling to read, um, tracking a line across the page, just, I mean, all over the place. I just was really struggling with that for the past two years until I started working with you. <laughs> oh, that, I want, that's, yeah, and you just listed a whole list of symptoms mm -hmm. there. Did you know, in that very first one, because I was looking at some of the research, and when we think about brain injuries and concussions, a lot of times these symptoms go unreported. You know, people mm -hmm. have what they call that mild or minor um, but anytime I'm thinking about dealing with the brain or an injury, it's all kind of major because it a lot of things happen that are so silent and subtle that you don't even realize you've had that injury. Let me go right. back to the very first one that you talked about. When you said it was kind of a minor concussion that very first time, were the symptoms present? Did you know something was off or did it just feel like a normal bump on the head and just kept rolling? Mm -hmm. I definitely noticed something was off, um, but the, I think the biggest difference was the symptoms weren't as severe and they didn't last very long. So kind of once I started feeling better, I was able to do the return to play protocol. Mm -hmm. I would say the second one, it was just completely different. I mean, I wasn't nauseous the first one. Um, that's kind of my, my first indication that night I went back to my room and was throwing up over the toilet. I was so sick. Um, and then the next day I went in take the impact test, which mm -hmm. is a concussion test. And I mean, I, I couldn't finish it. I started crying during it because I felt like I couldn't even read the screen. I couldn't remember. A lot of it is memory recall. I couldn't remember anything. Um, and it just, I just remember crying during it. It was, it was awful. Yeah. And how did that impact you from a mental health perspective? Because a lot of times people are suffering in silence. They have these symptoms that they can't really describe or explain, or people can't see the injury. So a lot of times people say, just get back to your daily living, life, work. Um, but some of these situations are very debilitating for people where they take you literally out of your sport, out of your job, out of your career. Um, and, I know that has to have had an emotional and mental toll on you. What was that like when you realized that these symptoms are more severe and it's really having an impact on you? How'd you handle yeah. that? So I feel like I've always been an expressive person and this was really hard for me because I feel like I couldn't outwardly express how I was feeling. It was like just a different injury than I've ever had because you can't see it. It's all about how you can relay how you're feeling and that was really hard for me. Um, I feel like during those, you know, first six months, I went through all kinds of treatments. I tried medicine. I had a really bad reaction to it. Um, and it actually ended up making me like more depressed. So I went off of that. Um, I tried acupuncture, muscular therapy, just everything I could possibly try to feel better and nothing was working. So I started having these thoughts, like I may never get better. This might just be my new normal, just like struggling to focus, pay attention, to be awake during the day, to have energy to do, you know, basic things, just going to class. So I just felt like I didn't want to talk about it because no one really understood what I was going through. And I struggled to express, you know, even those those things may seem minor when it affects how you do everything, how I went about school, how I went about soccer, just how I went about my relationships with my friends and family. I mean, it affects your whole life. And it really, I feel like changed me as a person. I feel like I wasn't the same person after that. And um, when my first meeting with you, we did the brain map and seeing the results. I remember I just, I started crying because I was like, this is everything I've been feeling for the past, you know, two, two and a half years. And now there's data, there's numbers, there's things that I can see. Like, I don't have to put it into words and it's real and it's there. And I was just, I felt very validated in the way that I felt in that first meeting with you. And I was like, okay, I'm all in, like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start this, do whatever it takes. So that was just one of the best feelings. Uh, I love that word that you just use validation. And I, mm -hmm. and I see it and hear it so often as you're describing just that going through what you're going through and feeling kind of like this is going to just be my new normal. Um, mm -hmm. People really not understanding. And when you think about the community and people who are dealing with post-concussion concussion syndrome or traumatic brain, brain injuries, um, that feeling of alone and isolation comes up very, very often where they're experiencing something. A lot of times it's so much easier to talk about the things that we can see, right? If you break right. your arm, twist your ankle, you can get a scan done and they can show you where this bone is really kind of damaged or broken here. And then you have a protocol of healing and treatment and training to get you back to play or get you back to work. 
But with the brain, it's a little bit different. And, and there are a lot of things that change from a personality standpoint. I heard you mention that um, just the ability to focus um, changes in your mood and just energy levels, motivation. Those things are happening underneath the surface. And you just talked about coming in to see us and getting your brain mapped which is that baseline assessment that kind of shows what the brain is doing in real time. So being able to see where these changes are occurring and helping validate what you're feeling from a physical, emotional perspective. Um, So we're so glad that you have come in and that you trained with us. Um, Tell us about that. How did you get led in the direction that you tried other therapies, acupuncture, medication management, a number of different things for um, solutions and, and benefits for your overall health. But how did you stumble upon Mental Edge? Mm-hmm. So I was very lucky that, you know, both my parents were very supportive of me trying to get better. Um, even though sometimes I wasn't always great about it. I was just like, this is the way it is. And I was just frustrated and almost just wanting to give up. And my mom actually found your podcast and just loved it and looked it up and you were actually just your office was 10 minutes from down the street from us and my mom was like this is a prayer answered let's go in and to be honest um at first I was a little skeptical because I was like nothing's worked why would this work and I'm saying that you know out of transparency because I'm sure other people are feeling that way too um but you know like I said after that first brain map I mean it just laid out everything that I had been feeling and there was almost like proof of that, that it wasn't just in my head, that it was real. Um, So after that, I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm ready to do this. Um, So really it was my mom that found your podcast was how I found um, Mental Edge. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, thanks mom for reaching out. That's a big deal. And I'm so glad you guys did. And I'm so glad, like you just described, having support and people around you. And it's important that you know, anybody that's listening right now, if you or a loved one know somebody that's gone through some of the similar symptoms that Brooke is describing right now, but you're not sure how to necessarily put those in words, Having people support you along that journey to know that you're not alone in that. Having family members, friends, or people that see you on a daily basis, if they're noticing changes about you, reaching out and getting help and getting support. You do not have to struggle alone. Um, Let's talk about what your training was like. So, yes, Brooke came to Mental Edge, got her brain map, a QEEG assessment, which looks at over 19 different areas of the brain. So we can see how well you can focus, how well you can process, how well you can sleep, um, how your brain and body responds under stress. So everything that the brain's responsible for, getting that initial assessment to know what's going on so that we can know how to put a treatment plan in place. And Brooke went through uh, neurofeedback training with us. Describe what that has been like in the office first. You came in in the office first. You were home for a little bit of time, trained with us. Talk through that process, and then we'll talk about uh, some of the mobile training that you're able to still do with us now. Yes. So um, my initial assessment, I was home for Christmas break or um, New Year's Eve, just that winter break in school. So I was able to come into the office a couple times a week and do um, neurofeedback. And at first, it was pretty tough because I was just not you really have to think about what you're actually thinking about which sounds weird but it was tough at first it made me feel a little tired Um, I wasn't used to focusing in that way but over time you just get used to it Um, and it was it was awesome I really loved working with you guys and I think just having that in-person relationship initially establishing that early on really helped me um, just throughout the past few months keep it going. Yeah. And you were just showing up willing and ready for something. I mean, you were really at a place looking for, and I think I say that to say that's a big part of um, Mm -hmm. that process as well, being able to show up in a place in a space, especially when you've been through other treatments before and we're feeling like there's been little success to still be pushing forward and saying, okay, I'll give this a shot and, and being able to have hope. And you came in and you trained and you worked hard every single day that you were training and, and your training consisted of watching a movie, getting feedback on the screen on where your brain is. And you're right. It is tough. When you leave there, you feel a little tired at times because <laughs> you've worked out. You've worked that mental muscle in a different way. What did you notice when you were going through some of those sessions in the office? What were some of the things that you experienced and noticed from your training? I would say initially one of the first things that I noticed when I was trying to focus on whether it was like the game or like a video I was watching my mind would just go way off track. I think you call it squirrel brain. Like yes. I would, my mind would just 
I mean, fly to different things that, you know, about my day or about something I have to do later. Like I was just really overactive in some of my thinking. I feel like I couldn't focus. Um, that was initially, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even pay attention to this for like six minutes. I think six minute trials. That was initially something that I was really trying to work on. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And over time, just kind of like you, you train from a, a muscular standpoint, you strengthen that mental muscle and it gets a little easier and easier each time. Um, and so you train with us in the office and then you got an opportunity to do some remote training because you went back to school. And so that's one of the other things about what we do at Mental Edge. Not only can you come in and train with us and and get your brain exercise, but if you're not local or you're not able to kind of come into the office, we do have some options available that are online remote where you can train from the comfort of your home and our professionals and our staff continue to monitor your progress in your treatment. So you're not alone in that process. What has that been like having the ability to train remotely? Um, and what have you noticed from that? I loved the remote training. I was, you know, playing a sport and doing school and everything else in between. Um, I was just able to do it whenever it worked for me. Sometimes that would be 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes that would be 11 a.m. in the middle of the day. Um, but it was just, it was awesome. And I think we ended up setting up, I could work on different things. So I could do an attention training mm -hmm. and then I could do a relaxation training. So it was really just like tailored to my schedule and I loved it. I was able to do it all the time. Um, it was great. I really, it was very convenient. I loved it. That's awesome. Every time we look up, we get an alert, Brooks training, Brooks training. <laughs> <laughs> you really have bought in and dived into your own healing journey, which is really incredible to see. So, so proud of you. We tell you that every time we get to see you in person, but even when we're talking on FaceTime, we're just proud of the work that you're doing and happy uh, with the success that you've had. What are some of those things in terms of how you've been feeling when you think about the benefits of your training experience? What has helped? What's, what are you noticing? I feel like almost everything across the board. Um, I noticed a really big difference in class. I was able to just pay attention so much better. I was able to focus for long periods of time. Um, reading, I loved reading growing up. And then after that, you know, second concussion, I hated it because I could, I would get headaches every time. Um, I feel like I couldn't track a line across a page. Um, I was also having migraines a lot. I didn't have that anymore. I noticed a big difference with that almost, I think at the two month mark, I was barely getting them anymore after having them for almost two years consistently. I would say the biggest thing was my sleep. So before I started doing the training, I would sleep, you know, nine hours. I would wake up, go to class. I would feel like I need to take a nap before practice. And then sometimes I would need to take a nap after practice before I was able to start doing my homework because I just felt drained all the time, no matter how much sleep I got, it didn't matter. I just felt really drained. I felt, you know, I had no energy. I was not motivated. And so after I, you know, about a month or so of doing the training, I was able to just be up all day. I was so much more productive. I was energized. I was just able to get a lot more done. And I felt like because of that, my mood was a lot better. I was a lot more positive. I was just a lot happier. I just felt like I could be my best self. Honestly, I feel like I just got my life back and I was able to be the really I just the best version of myself. And I feel, haven't felt that way in probably two years at that point. So it was amazing. <laughs> That's huge. That's incredible. Yes. That is so incredible. And we're so, so happy for you and excited for you and the continuation of what you and your brain can do. Um, and not only from a sports perspective, like you said, but in life right now, you're a student, you're in PA school, right? So you need yes. your brain. <laughs> yes. Your brain needs that energy and fuel because you got tests that you're taking, you're in class. I mean, so you're studying. What's next for you? What have you been up to recently now that you're in school? How has the ability for your brain to kind of turn on uh, been an impact for you right now? So I just think that if I did not do mental edge, there is probably no way I could be doing PA school right now. I mean, we're in class about six hours a day or really, yeah, six hours a day, including lab time. And then on top of that, you're studying five, five more hours after that, whether it's going to the library and just like cranking it out or, you know, maybe doing like a couple hours, taking a break another couple hours. But I mean, it's, it's all day, every day. It's a huge commitment. Um, 
my focus is great. My attention is great. I have the energy to stay up during the day and do that and get what I need to get done. And I just know that without this, if I was how I was before I started mental health training, there is just no way I could have been successful in this environment. And there's no way I would have been able to carry out those commitments that I need to do in terms of studying and focusing to be successful in PA school. And I'm, I'm only, you know, just almost two months in, but I mean, it's a huge, huge time commitment and it's just going to keep snowballing. It's going to keep growing in terms of that as I take on more classes in the fall semester. So I'm just so thankful. I feel like this really also gave me a, just a confidence boost starting in PA school, feeling like I can do this. My brain is ready to take this on. I'm in a good place. So that's just, it's been great. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. You're going to continue to crush it. You are going to continue to crush it. What would you say to someone right now who's kind of in that position that you were in a few years, a few months ago, um, that is really kind of struggling or in that place of fog and not sure what to do? What would you say to someone who may be thinking, this is my life as I know it? Mm -hmm. There's nothing else that can be done. Yes, I would say just be open minded, because I think that's what it took for me just to come in. And then just being committed to the training, I would say definitely try it. You have nothing to lose. And that was kind of my mindset when I first started, like, might as well just go for it. You know, I've tried everything. There's nothing to lose. And I feel like I just I gained my life back. I got a grip on, you know, who I am, who I want to be. I feel like I have the energy now to do the things that I know I could do, but maybe was just struggling to do them because of my brain injury. So I would say just definitely go for it and be open minded. And yeah, I, I've loved it. I've had the best experience with it. So just be open minded and willing to try it. I love it. Be open minded, <laughs> coming in with that type of mindset. And you're exactly right. I think we have to show up with that mindset in everything that we do. And we're hoping that this show today helps somebody or a family member that you may know. And like I said, it doesn't just have to be about sports. Head injuries occur so often and people feel like, oh, yeah, that was just a bump on the head. But recognizing that bump on the head has a lot of lifelong and lasting impact on how you function. And so have, if you've ever had an injury and you're starting to feel things differently emotionally, mentally, um, sleep disturbances, don't ignore that. There is help available. Research is growing around the benefits of neurofeedback training as it relates to traumatic brain injuries and concussions. So you want to make sure that you are educating yourself on all of the tools and technologies that are coming out to support people um, that may be in situations where they've tried several things over and over again with little to su little success, little success. Sorry about that. Um, but you want to make sure you keep going, keep searching, keep seeking. And Brooke, I think that's what led you to us. You know, you and your family kept going, kept searching, kept seeking. And I'm so glad because we've had an honor of working with you. And we're so excited about all the things that you're doing and that you will continue to do. And so if you or someone you know is looking for support, don't hesitate to reach out to Mental Edge Fitness Solutions. Uh, we can support you in the office or through remote training, as Brooke described. There's options available. Um, so another quick fact. Children and teens, I think this is big because kids are very active in sports, in school. Children and teens make up approximately 70% of all sport-related concussions seen in the emergency department. 70%. So parents out there, when we think about our youth, their brain is developing at such a rapid pace. It's such an important time. Just seek support. Don't allow that to go go by without checking in on that. Brooke, is there anything that you want to say before we end today's show? We've been just happy to have you. Um, I just want to say thank you. I just love working with you. You've always just supported me and encouraged me. And I'm very grateful to come on and share my story because I know there's a stigma around concussions. And I was probably a little guilty of that, too, before it happened to me. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share. Oh, well, we are so thankful for you and keep up the good work. Keep shining your light. The sky is the limit for you. You've got so many good things ahead and we're so excited to be a part of your journey. And I want my Mental Fitness Matters community to go out and shine bright like the stars that you are. Continue to move forward and have a great week. Cannot wait to see you guys next week. See you soon.